Hi everyone, this is Gail Julie Makes. I hope you're all well. So we're returning to this piece today. Um, I did say I'd do a part two video. This was my alcohol ink work that I did on a gel plate that I then transferred from the plate onto a canvas. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm adding a bit more blending solution to this now and um, just get generally going to do a bit more work on it. So I've reactivated the ink basically by putting the blending solution on. And now I'm laying a stencil over to do some work. Stupidly, I did lay the stencil the wrong way um, because I've been so used to using it on the gel plate. I just put it in reverse. Um, obviously, you don't need to do this if you do it straight on a canvas because when you pull it off, it's going to be going in exactly the direction you want. So um, I do sort this out and turn it over. And there's me realising. <laughs> okay, so I'll carry on um, showing you what I'm doing. So I'm liking that, actually. So it's all about experimentation. I had no idea what was going to happen here today. So again, love the way that's pulling that colour out again. And we're going to get a little bit of... I love the way it kind of strips it back to blue. That's really interesting. We're going to go back in and we're going to lay that. And we're going to pull it maybe onto this bit here. Some of it. Nice. Yeah, that would be lovely when we've dried it. I want more of that actually. I want to fill these gaps here. I'm going to pull that off and we've got some words on there. They are disappearing again, but again, you can get your heat tool in there to sort of save it to a certain degree. Yeah? Loving that bit there, look. Lovely. Okay. So that's that stencil. Let's bring in another one. Let's bring in some of those symbols now. Okay, and we'll maybe do a bit of the symbols down the side here. So, a bit of the blending solution. Maybe what we could try and do is just try and... I don't think that's going to make it work any better, but we'll just get a bit of that. Love this area here now. Look at that. Let's dry that. I really like that. Right, and then we're going to pop this on here and just get some of that, get some of that colour through. So I hope, I hope you're enjoying this. It's just really very experimental. Um, you know, you might think, oh my goodness, what a complete mess. I do not want to go near that with a barge pole. But I'm finding it quite fascinating, the sort of effects you can get, and you can use them... You know, for collage, you can use them for canvases, you can use them for whatever you want, really. So I had a bit of an experiment after this video on a couple more canvases to see if I could get a defined stencil mark. I did actually manage to do that, and the way I did it was I laid the stencil down, as I have on this one, and then I actually used my heat gun to dry through the stencil. You don't want to get too close because it's plastic. You don't want to walk the plastic of your stencil. But as long as you've got a safe distance, it dries fairly quickly anyway. And the result was really good. So I've got a separate video on that. That's um, the um, alcohol ink flood technique on canvases. And um, that gives you that really defined image. So if you want to see that, just um, look out. Uh, should be um, not the next video after this one, but the one after that. So I'm hopefully uploading it all at the same time. So you should see that soon. Um, anyway, I am going to whiz on a little bit. So this is my dried canvas. I'm doing more mixed media pieces. I do really like doing my mixed media. So there's going to be a right range of things on the, the channel this year. But I like the idea of having this um, torn image. This was an image that I actually tried to pull as an image transfer at one point. It didn't really work out, but I still save things like that. So it had like a circle. You can see the circle just about there, look. Um, that was just sort of part of the ink that had pulled it, but it didn't work. Um, not very well anyway, so um, I just keep pieces like that because you can use them for collage. So what I'm going to do then is I've got um, two different types of matte medium. I've got my really runny one, which is uh, Galleria, and I've got my um, sort of slightly thicker one, which is by Dina Wakeley. And I'm just going to get that stuck down, basically. So I'm going to cover this area. I didn't like this area quite as much, so I'm just going to get that covered. And as you can see here, I'm just putting a bit of matte medium over the top as well as underneath to make sure it's stuck securely and just kind of get try to get a few wrinkles out and then I give it a dry. 
Okay, so next job. Now I did have that sheet, remember, with some lovely alcohol ink sections that I really liked. I really liked that one, just to add a little bit more of that alcohol ink effect at the bottom. So I think we'll get this one on here. What have we got next then? Okay, so this is an alcohol ink piece that I did on Upo paper. And I'm just considering whether to bring this particular piece in. It's like it's shining a light down on it then. So let me just try cutting this out. What do we think? It's hard for me to tell because... Sorry, I'm just moving my camera. I like to be able to see things properly through and I can't quite see it because of my bracket for my camera. <laughs> um, I think I like that, I think. Should we just do it? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Now, I don't know what, I haven't really stuck Upo down before like this, so I don't know what this is going to be like. The only problem is we are covering up quite a lot of our nice background, aren't we, with those words. Oh well, we've committed now. We can do it, it's fine. It's what happens when you're doing these things, isn't it? You cover up areas you probably most wanted to keep originally, but... Still got that nice bit there. Do we like that bit? Yeah, maybe we'll capture that just in there. Look, so we've still got that section. Yeah, let's go for it there. Now, obviously, matte medium is very messy, but it should it should dry clear, so it should be fine. So it's just a wet wipe, just getting some of it off because it won't activate the alcohol ink, thankfully. Okay, let's just get that back up there. So I had a bit of a glitch, I've missed a bit off here. Um, top right is a bit of Dina Wakely Gilt Gloss Spray through a stencil. Um, and then I'm going to go in with another gloss spray, I think this one's medieval. Yeah, this one does. A little bit more of that. I like pouring this gloss spray. So let's do my usual and pour it. So basically, I get get my bottle, get the top section, and then I just usually dribble it down things. Which is actually working quite well with those bits of paint that I've already got on there. So that's actually what I mean, it's kind of using the natural pathways from that. And it's dribbling down. What I'm going to do now is get some texture paste into the mix. Well, maybe we could sort of do something, do something this side really. So maybe I'll do a bit of the gilt colour. Now this hasn't actually got anything to naturally sort of flow through though, like that last one did. Maybe I'll just do some natural. Natural lines like that. So I've got some embossing paste. Um, so I can use that for my stenciling. So I think what I'll do is... Let's get a bit of... I've got some Chinese writing here. 
get a bit of this on there, I guess. Let's put some of this up here, I think. So basically what I'm going to do for this is I use a palette knife or a spatula, really. It's a spatula, I suppose. Pop that in my... It's going very gloopy now, my embossing paste. I haven't used it for a while. So I'm going to just... Bring that through. shoes so I've got my twilights this is my versifying Claire ink and I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my blender get that back in the right place which was about there and see what we get Now this is another stencil girl stencil. I can't remember the name of the artist, but I'll try and link it below in the description. So I just cut this one down to size because it was part of the bigger stencil. So we are losing a bit of our alcohol ink quality, but I think it will look fine because if you spread it to that green area there. Bit more down here. Again, spread it into the area that it matches most, and it doesn't look very good. Well, I don't know. It doesn't really show the tree completely down here, but I kind of like this bit. Okay, let's go with it. Some more magazine elements. So I quite like this section. I'm used. I did buy this magazine for image transfer. So this is salvage. Um, about fabrics and things but it, it's just totally not the right sort of paper so I don't mind ripping it up to use it for collage basically which is good so I quite like these okay and maybe we'll have a row a few rows of mothballs So I'm just deciding where to place the mothballs because I don't want that stark white, you know, ruining um, another another area of the piece. Okay then, so this is where we're at. Um, I, there's the, there was a bit of a glitch, um, so I'm missing a little bit of it basically, but you know how these things are. So I think you saw me laying this section down. What I've done then basically is I started to add layers of uh, a little bit of a magazine which was actually a picture of some uh, sort of traditional, I think it was traditional Japanese fishermen. Um, I loved the sort of sea effect, which was these sort of patterns here. But then I felt, mm, came back and looked at it later on, you know, as you do. And I thought, no, it doesn't work. It just sort of takes, just changes the meaning of the picture, really. Um, so what I did was I sort of thought, ah, well, what I'll do is I'll tear it off because I'd already stuck it down. And, you know, I quite like that that sort of layer that I'd got from tearing. So you can still see a little bit of the fish in the sea. And then I've extended with the Bear Branch Thicket stencil, which is a stencil girl one, as we mentioned earlier. And I've kind of just placed that over the top of that area that I wanted to cover. And I've gone over with my um, Liquitex Heavy Body Pains Grey. And I've just basically put some down on my mat. And I've just gone through with a, with a, a sponge really lightly. Or fairly lightly anyway. I, did, I didn't want it to be too dark. And I feel like that's blending in with these sort of colours here and the colour of the lamp now. So I did... Um, I've got the pouring earlier on in my video. I did also do a bit of stenciling down this side as well. So, um, because I, I did want a bit of white showing, but I also didn't want it to be completely white. So, um, you know, so I've got basically a bit of everything in this. You've got your alcohol inks, you've got your magazine, you've got your, your pouring effects um, from the Dina Wakely and also through a stencil. Um, so that's the gloss sprays. And then I've kind of incorporated this in a little bit more by darkening it. Because I thought it would maybe a little bit too stark, the sort of the white, well, the creamish colour, I guess it was. So, you know, it's um, it's turning into qu quite a different piece than what I expected, but that's what art is like, isn't it? Um, I've looked at various stages of it on my video, and I'm kind of like, oh, I wish I'd left it there. Why didn't I leave it there? You know what it's like. But when I was at that stage, I obviously wasn't happy with it. So <laughs> you just got to go with the flow and um, 
you know, see what becomes of it because it really does depend on your mood on the given day, as you know. We, we're always chopping and changing. But generally, I'm happy with this one so far. I'm not happy with this bit at the bottom. I have no idea what we're going to do with that. Um, I think I'm not going to be afraid to leave white sections, but I do feel like maybe I need to sort of have a darker edge so you've got like a focal point so maybe i'll go for a darker edge um, a bit like i do in some of my stamping videos and then you've got that you pulled into that sort of center section there which i think you are anyway because of the lamp so what i'm going to do then guys is just add a few more layers um i have got that section there that we put the um texture paste on or no well it's the embossing paste so i can go over that with some waxes so i think that will be my next job because you can't see that at all now because obviously it's dry clear so what i'm going to do is get some of my thinner bear waxes and we'll go from there i think i think maybe the firebird one might be nice on this one purely because it will kind of go with this tone here so this is the um art alchemy um so these waxes are beautiful. So this is like a metallic effect. And um, they I haven't used these for a while, but oh, they smell gorgeous. Okay, I can't even get the lid off. <laughs> um, right, there we go. So you see that lovely, that lovely colour we've got in a the tin there. I think that's going to go really well with this piece. So we may be using a bit more of this. So I've already got very glued up fingers from a previous project. And what we'll do is we'll just start adding... A little bit on here just to pull out that the texture of that that piece that we've done this was a Chinese writing remember I kind of feel like if I've got a bit of that now I'm gonna to have to probably balance it out with this doing a bit on this side um, so what we'll probably do is just see what it looks like. Just yeah. So you know it, it looks it looks nice just layering it onto your canvas without even worrying about having the texture under there anyway. So this could even be part of my edging colour because it's kind of almost giving me a slightly sort of sepia vibe as well. I think connecting it with like a light maybe making me think of like a dark room possibly, but. You know, you might be seeing something totally different in this as well. Um, yeah, so obviously to me it's talking about nature, putting a focus or a light on nature maybe. Right, so we've got some um, we've got some of the Firebird on there. I will just see what that looks like in this bottom corner as well. Actually, maybe, let's just see what it looks like. If we've got it sort of reaching up here. I've got a bit of um, texture paste there that I was using as well that kind of needs a bit of blending, I would say. So let's just maybe try and get that area there covered. Again, that was a bit I was not so sure about. So, yeah, again, we're just doing that. What I haven't tried, to be honest, guys, is I haven't ever tried to put wax through a stencil. I've got a really nice um, Carabao stencil here, which is a bit of handwriting. So what I will do is just go through this stencil and just see what it looks like if we're putting the waxes through the stencil. I should probably be doing this through a a thinner bear stencil really obviously it's not going to pick up those small details because it's hard to push it through but yeah it's okay i'm uh i'm thinking maybe we won't carry that one on any further but it, you know it's all about experimentation so but it does give me an extra something at the bottom there let's just have a look at that from my angle yeah okay what i think i'll do i'm not sure about this bit I've got a really nice um, Brilliance Pigment Ink, Moonlight White ink there. And what I think I will do is maybe um, see if I can just get a little bit of this area here a bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is just place, just place a certain area of this, maybe that area there. So just get some on our sponge. 
and we'll just press it through. So again, I'm layering over other layers um, just to try and get some more of that white back. Yeah, <clears throat> that's breaking up a bit more. Um, maybe we'll have a bit of a thicker branch here. Put that through there. So yeah, so we've got like another layer underneath now, which is quite nice. I quite like that. Maybe I'm going to go for a bit of that up here. Actually, let's just move those blending solution that away. I'll we'll need them in a minute. And maybe we'll just have almost like some of the tree coming out from behind the lamp there or the light. Okay, so I'm just getting a little bit of that brilliance on my sponge. And I'm just going to sort of take it up. And this is a good way, if you feel like, you know, colours have got a bit out of control and you think, I didn't want it that dark or I'm just not happy with where it's at, then you can bring it back. Obviously, I've gone over the lamp a little bit there, but that's fine. You can sort of see light bits anyway, so it doesn't really, doesn't take too much away. And then maybe one just this side as well. Um, and this, this ink isn't going to ruin your stencil in any way because it's... It's just so fine anyway. Okay, and we'll just get a little bit of that in as well. Okay, there we go. So it's just blending it in a little bit more. So we've got such a harsh lines around the section where your light is meant to end. Okay. <coughs> And we'll just see if we can do that bit there as well. Because we've got a nice edge in there, look. That works well with where the actual light ends as well. Let's merge it down a bit into those. There we go. And that gives us maybe the impression of this as well going on further back, which is nice. Let's see if we can get that captured a bit more in this section as well. Let's bring it down a bit. Yeah, not showed up so well that side, but I think it's because I'd already laid some down before I picked up on that. But no, that's nice. I'm liking that. And then we'll just go for a bit more here as well, I think. Again, just capturing that edge. And if you haven't got, you know, some of these inks, guys, then don't worry. Just use a bit of gesso, maybe. Maybe water down or a white acrylic, something like that. That'd be fine. Okay, so that's blended the light in a little bit more. Okay, and then maybe we'll just take a little bit and just go over this section again. Again, we're always just blending, aren't we? We're just blending. Let's just see what it looks like over here. Maybe lighten up this area a little bit. Yeah, making that stand out fairly well now, so pretty happy with that. That's just... Maybe bring a bit in from the top around this bigger branch. And again, I know we've sort of been covering up a lot of the uh, a lot of the background initial gel plate that we had, but you know that's what we do with collage, isn't it? We don't can't always have everything from the original piece. Otherwise, you might as well just lay your original piece down like your original tissue paper and that is your work. You've got to kind of go over the top of certain areas. So, it's just the way it is. So, I'm still not very happy with this area at the bottom. So, I'm thinking I might kind of blend some of that Payne's Grey around, maybe. Yes, that is better. Happy with that. Much happy with that. Okay, so obviously clean your stencil off if you're using acrylics on there. Um, obviously, we've got. I quite like this area here with a torn effect. And, you know, we could build up some texture around this sort of area just because obviously it's quite a, a sort of sharper edge. Oh, I've got the graphite, actually. This graphite is a nice one. Again, by Finnebear. Um, texture paste graphite. Oops. 
And again, this kind of colour reminds me of the lamp, which is what suddenly made me think of it. The graphite texture paste is fairly gritty, and that's why I like using it. Um, here, I've gone from using the spatula to my fingers. It's not difficult to wash off at all. It's really great to use, so I do recommend it. Um, I will say, though, that it does dry fairly translucent, so you will have some of those colours from your background showing through once it's dry. So if you want it to be really opaque, just use a good chunk more than I have. And then it's just this area at the top, really. I'm quite liking the firebird round there. I think I will just go for a bit more branch with this texture paste, just to blend it in more. And because that texture paste is gritty, um, or for any kind of paste, really, I recommend washing it off your stencil straight away. Okay, so I'm back and just brought in a couple more colours. I've got old white and rich copper and I've got my um, white back in my ink because I'm just pondering whether to just go through this sort of section a little bit more just to get those branches in there a little bit more with the white. Just so we'll see what we think. So the rich copper, if I can open this one, <laughs> the rich copper colour is like that one. So the difference with that and the firebird, I'll just show you. This is a bit more metallic, obviously, like we said, yeah. So you can see a bit of the difference there. And then the old white, um, we've just got that. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to go in with a little bit of the rich copper. And I'm basically framing the edge here because, as we said earlier, we try and get that focal point in the middle. So getting a slightly sort of darker colour all the way around the edge will draw your eye into the middle of the picture. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm extending my white branch area a little bit just so it kind of goes off the canvas so it doesn't end so abruptly. And I'm using that Brilliance White ink again for that. I do decide to continue this on um, on some of those sort of wax areas just to give it a little bit more dimension and obviously, you know, more layers. We love our layers. Right, we'll leave it at that, I think. Uh, yeah, happy with that, guys. So, I hope I hope you've enjoyed watching it. It's been a bit of something different, not very different, like I say, originally from what I thought I was going to be doing. But I love that you can just do something, it'll take you anywhere. So, it's an escapism, isn't it? Anyway, so, I do hope you will um, subscribe to the channel uh, if you enjoyed this video. And please give it a like. That'll help just spread it around youtube a little bit more i'm always doing um gel plate videos um i love experimenting so please do drop me any comments if there's anything you'd like to see and please do go and check out all my um my playlists okay so top left there is my profile picture if you want to click on that and hit the bell and all notifications that will subscribe you to the channel and let you know whenever i've got a new video coming out and bottom left there should be another video that i think you might be interested in so please give that a click and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care of yourselves and keep crafting. Bye for now.